Lecture twenty eight. Thermoelectric device figure of merit. In the last lecture, we have seen that the performance of a thermoelectric device is not just dependent upon the Seebeck coefficient or the thermal power. The performance also depends on the electrical conductivity and the thermal conductivity of the semiconductor material making up the TE device. Because several factors can determine the energy conversion. Efficiency of a TE device. It is common to define a quantity called the FOM, or the figure of merit, and we use the FOM to indicate how good a material is for the TE. Application. The figure of merit is written in the form of Z T, as we can see on the left-hand side of this equation. So notice that the F O M for a T E device. Is a little bit unusual because it is written as the product of two quantities. T is the absolute temperature in kelvins, and Z is in fact a quantity that is equals to alpha squared sigma divided by the total. Thermal conductivity, but notice that E Z is not the F O M. E Z T is the figure of merit. So please be careful about the definition of the F O M for a T E device. So let's just remind ourselves what. Are the quantities on the right-hand side of the F O M equation? In this equation, the symbol sigma is the electrical conductivity of the semiconductor, which makes up the T E device. Capital T is the absolute Temperature and kappa is the thermal conductivity. Notice that the thermal conductivity has two components because, as we mentioned on page thirty-eight, there is one component of thermal conductivity due to the electrons and another. Component of thermal conductivity due to the lattice phonons, or in other words, the vibrations of the constituent atoms or ions of the semiconductor. So, a common question to ask is why is there a Temperature T on both sides of this equation. Why don't we simply cancel the T and write E Z equals to alpha square sigma divided by the sum of the two kappas? And the reason is because we use E Z T to find the energy conversion. Efficiency 
for a TE device. It is simply more convenient to write the FOM as EZT. So let's look at the two conductivities in a little bit more detail. And we use a table form to introduce the thermal conductivity and the electrical conductivity in the EZT. On the left hand side, we show what is thermal conductivity. One method of heat transfer through any solid object, including a semiconductor, is called thermal conduction. In this heat transfer mechanism, heat will flow from the hot end to the cold end of the object by the vibrations of the atoms in the solid. In fact, as we have seen in the previous lecture, heat will also flow by conduction via the motion of the charge carriers such as electrons and holes. The ratio of the flux of heat flow or the heat flux to the temperature difference is called a thermal conductivity. In other words, thermal conductivity kappa is simply equals to the flux of heat flow divided by the temperature difference. And the thermal conductivity is a property of the semiconductor. And in fact, it is one of the quantities that appear in Fourier's law of heat conduction. Electrical conductivity. So this is a basic property for all metals and semiconductors. It simply tells us how much current density can be obtained for a given electric field. In other words, the electrical conductivity is equal to the current density divided by the electric field. And the electrical conductivity sigma is found in Ohm's law for electrical conduction. So we have explained the quantities sigma and kappa in the definition of the FOM for a TE device. And it should be clear now how to get a high value for the FOM or EZT. First, it is very important to have a high value for alpha or the thermal power or the Seebeck coefficient. Next, we want to have a high electrical conductivity. On the other hand, we want the thermal conductivity kappa E plus kappa pH 
to be small. In other words, we do not want the semiconductor to have a high thermal conductivity. And this is very important to bear in mind when we work with these thermal electric materials. So now let's look at some typical EZT values. On the left hand side of this page, we show the plot of the figure of merit EZT on the vertical axis as a function of the absolute temperature T. Notice that all these temperatures are measured in Kelvins. So these are absolute temperatures. And that is why they start from zero, absolute zero, and they go all the way up to 1,400 Kelvins. So in this uh, plot, we are showing the EZT as a function of the absolute temperature for eight different semiconductors. Notice that all the materials that are shown in this plot are semiconductors. They are in fact complicated compound semiconductors. And although there is quite a lot of data on this plot, we can easily see that they have one thing in common. And that is the figure of merit EZT increases with the temperature at first. And then after the maximum is reached, the figure of merit will decrease with the temperature. We can see this trend for silicon germanium. We highlight silicon germanium because silicon germanium is in fact the first known thermal electric semiconductor. The X in the formula for silicon germanium indicates the atomic concentration of germanium in this alloy semiconductor. Silicon germanium is also used for microelectronic devices. The other very important trend to note in this uh, plot of EZT is that the maximum value for all these thermoelectric semiconductors they lie between 1 and 2. In fact, all of them have an EZT value that is smaller than 2. It's important to notice that at the present time there are very very few semiconductors with an EZT value that is near to 2. Okay, thermoelectric efficiency. The thermoelectric efficiency is similar to the power conversion efficiency of a photovoltaic device. It simply tells us the amount of 
electrical energy that can be converted by the TE device per unit amount of thermal energy. In other words, the thermal electric efficiency eta TE is telling us how much useful electrical energy we can get for a given amount of input thermal energy or heat flow. The thermal energy can be in the form of infrared radiation or it could be some stored uh, heat or stored thermal energy. So let's look at how to find the thermal electric efficiency or the eta TE. It's given by this equation. It's equals to the product of the Carnot efficiency eta C and the square bracket term. And we can see that inside this square bracket term we have the FOM or EZT. It's given by the ratio of root 1 plus EZT minus 1 and root of 1 plus EZT plus TC over T hot. TC is the temperature of the cold side in kelvins and TH is the temperature of the hot side in kelvins. And the equation below is the formula for the Carnot efficiency eta C and this is simply dependent on the temperature of the hot side and the temperature of the cold side. So we have T hot minus T cold divided by T hot for the Carnot efficiency. This Carnot efficiency can also be written as 1 minus T cold over T hot. So let us uh, use an example to illustrate how this equation is used. A TE device operates with the hot end at 600 degrees C and the cold end is at 30 degrees C. The semiconductor material inside the TE device has a EZT of 1.42 at the operating temperature. So what is the thermal electric conversion efficiency of this device? So the first thing you do is to convert these temperatures in degrees Celsius to Kelvins. We simply add 273, 273 to each of these two temperatures and we will get the temperatures converted to kelvins and this will give us an eta c of 65.3 percent next we substitute for ezt at the operation temperature and square root of 1 plus ezt works out to be 1.556. Therefore we can substitute into the equation for eta TE as shown here and we will get an eta TE of 19%.
Okay, on page 44, we show a graph of the ratio of thermal electric efficiency to the Carnot efficiency as a function of Ezt. So notice that on this uh, vertical axis, the epsilon is equals to eta Te, and epsilon C is equals to eta C. So epsilon over epsilon C is simply the ratio of the thermoelectric to the Carnot efficiency. And this plot is simply a graph of the ratio of the two efficiencies as a function of Ezt for a fixed value of Th and Tc. The value of Th in this plot is fixed at 500 degrees Celsius and Tc is fixed at 30 degrees Celsius. And what we can see is that for this two fixed temperatures, Th and Tc, the ratio of efficiencies is always increasing with the figure of merit Ezt. And we highlight two particular points on this graph. The first point, as indicated by the cursor, corresponds to Ezt equals 2. Notice that for Ezt equals 2, the ratio of efficiencies is slightly above 0 0.4. Why? is this point highlighted. It's because, as we mentioned on page 41, the Zt values of all the thermoelectric materials we know today are all less than 2. And that will give us a ratio of efficiencies just above 0.4. If we go to a higher value of Ezt and consider Ezt equals to 3, the ratio of efficiencies increases to about 0 0.48. So what this plot tells us is that the thermal electric conversion efficiency will increase if we can have a semiconductor material that has Ezt in the range of 2 to 3. This means 2 to 3. And if this material can be found then we can further increase the conversion efficiency and these TE devices should become more common. However, this is a piece of work that remains to be done and in the search for better and better TE materials, the main focus now is on semiconductor materials. That is because semiconductors allow us to tailor their electrical conductivity as well as their thermal conductivity through material design. In other words, it's possible to design semiconductor materials such that their thermal conductivity is low but the electrical conductivity is high.
Let's now consider the application of TE materials. We can use TE devices to make a PV plant more efficient by converting the infrared radiation that a PV device cannot convert into electricity. This table shows that about 42% of the incident sunlight is in the infrared portion of the spectrum. This energy from the sun cannot be converted by the photovoltaic device into electricity because the wavelength is too long. The photovoltaic device can only convert sunlight approximately in the range of 200 to 800 nanometers. So what we can do is to use a scheme like this. This is a schematic diagram for a thermal, electric and PV energy conversion system. So first the sunlight is concentrated by a Fresnel lens into a small spot on the reflection lens. And the light from the reflection lens is then separated into the infrared portion, the IR portion, and the UV and visible light portion by this wavelength segregator. So the wavelength segregator will separate the sunlight into the visible component and the infrared component or the longer wavelength component. The visible light will be incident onto a solar cell for direct conversion into electricity. Notice that the solar cell should be maintained at a temperature below 80 degree Celsius. And the infrared portion, the longer wavelength portion of the sunlight from the wavelength segregator will be used to heat up this heat collector. So this red box represents a heat absorber and the heat is converted directly to electricity by these thermal electric generators. And it's noticed that we should notice that the temperature of the heat collector should be more than 500 degrees C in order to have an efficient conversion. We finish by mentioning briefly the TE devices in space exploration. So in 2012, a rover from NASA lands on Mars. Because of the long distance solar energy